Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park, standing out in a little uh, snow drizzle here in Buffalo today. But for today's video, we're going to be going down the barbette for the 6 inch 47. Uh, we have it on pretty good authority from research and things like that that this is the last United States 6 inch 47 triple in the world. So this is a pretty exciting video and I hope you enjoy it. So a little of the history here of these uh, guns. These were originally constructed for the Brooklyn class uh, light cruisers and that would have been in the mid to uh, late 30s. So the Brooklyns I think were constructed from 1935 to 1938 uh, and they were found so uh, well constructed, so well assembled, and so useful that they also then put them on the subsequent light cruiser class, uh, the Cleveland class. All right. One of the complaints was that uh, the the train up uh, left to right and the elevation of the guns uh, was pretty slow. All right. They were only able to move about 10 degrees a minute. So that made them more single-purpose weapons than dual-purpose, like you'd see. You just see the little barrel of the 5-inch 38 right there. Right, so those were dual-purpose, right? Those were air and surface. These were primarily just for the surface because of that low rate of training motion left to right and up and down for the elevation. Right, they could actually swing 150 degrees from uh, the center line to port and the center line to starboard. Now, in total, this turret weighed about 165 tons. Right, uh, the, the plating would have been anywhere from six and a half inches uh, in the front, it's about three and a half inches on the side. And in the rear, where the access hatch would be, it was about uh, about an inch and a quarter. So from about six and a half inches thickness steel down to an inch and a quarter. Well, let's get out of this rain. Uh, that's a little bit about the turret. You'll see that in a future video where I'll actually go into the turret itself and uh, talk about the assemblies in there. But for now, we're going to be heading down the barbette and then filming coming up the barbette, which is pretty exciting, again, because this is the last one in the world, and it's a little gem we have here at the Buffalo Naval Park, and we hope you enjoy. So, follow me. Hey everyone, well now I'm standing on the first platform, and I'm gonna run a diagram across the screen of where we are headed. All right, so take a good look at that. And what you'll find is where that X is on that diagram, that's where I entered this, uh, the barbette, right? So that's on the first platform. So with Cleveland class cruisers, if you're considering the main deck is say deck one, we also have a second deck, we have a third deck, we have a first platform, and we have a second platform. Right, so I am standing on the third deck below the main deck inside the barbette and I will explain this a little bit but first we got to go down one more to the second platform. Alright and that's where the powder magazines were uh, and so let's, let's check it out. Now a little housekeeping as well, I'm doing this video on my own. So uh, I've got my walkie-talkie with me in case anything happens, but none of the staff were available today to help me. So uh, i got to climb down the ladders and then try and grab the camera and get it down there. So I probably won't be showing any of that. I'll just come back to you when I'm on each uh, platform or deck. See you in a minute. Well, everyone, this is, uh, this is quite an experience. Uh, for me, and I hope for you too, I had not yet come down to this space down on the second platform. First thing to notice is that the whole deck is filled with hydraulic fluid, and you can see even in the hoists that there's a lot of leftover oil and uh, hydraulic fuel. 
or hydraulic oil. If we take a walk around, what we're going to look at is there is a projectile magazine. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so obviously all of the projectiles have been removed, and these will be the 110-pound uh, projectiles that, again, I'll cover when I'm actually inside the turret itself. But if we take a look at the doors and the hatches, what you're seeing is that embedded in the hatch itself was the pass-through for the projectiles and the powder. So there's one projectile room down here and two powder rooms. So here's a powder room here. That's good. This is more intact. All right, noticing the holes and stuff here on the sides, I will say we're at about frame 25. All right, I think it's 25 and the forward. Yep, through to 29 over here. So you can tell. And again, we're at the, the turret, the first turret. Here is also another powder magazine. So again, we had two powder magazines and one projectile uh, magazine down here. And again, these were the pass-throughs. I'm seeing this stuff for the first time, so I'm kind of in awe. And then there's the ladder I climb back up. All right, in the middle, obviously, is the center hoist. That's where a lot of the hydraulic uh, oil is coming from. Because this was a triple, we've got our uh, left, or we've got our right center port. And so the projectiles, uh, most of the projectiles were stored above on the uh, third deck, I believe it is. I'll confirm that when I get up there. But uh, most of, so there was a a secondary projectile space here, but this was mostly for the powder. I believe the powder was about uh, 40 pounds each, and they were encased in uh, metal casings, right? better than the bags uh, that were previously used on earlier U.S. naval ships. There seems to be another pass-through here, but I'm not familiar because it's not attached to a hatch at all. So if any of you have an idea of what this extraneous, superfluous pass-through would be, uh, you know, please leave a comment. Maybe it looks like it could be a hold. Because huh. all of the others are attached to the hatches where people in the G division would be patch passing them through the hatch like you see here. All right, let's head up a level, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, now I'm back on the first platform. And what happens here on this deck is the barbette goes from about 15 feet in diameter down to 5 feet in diameter. So this allows this area to hold uh, drill ammunition or dummy ammunition right, when they're training. And this is where you certainly wouldn't be firing uh, live rounds. So this is where the drill or the dummy ammunition would be. It's also a pass-through for uh, the clothing and the small uh, stores. So this is where uh, sailors would get uh, articles of clothing and things like that. So they, they had this as a pass-through and the barbette being shrunk to uh, five feet in diameter as opposed to 15 feet allows for that easy pass-through. 
So here's an example of some of the drill ammunition right up top there. And you see that ladder? That's where we're going next. And I'll see you up there. Well, everyone, I'm as amazed as <laughs> I'm as amazed as you are. All right, I'm going to walk you around. Uh, this is a pretty tight space, and quite frankly, I feel like I'm in Star Trek. I feel like I'm wearing grav boots. All right, anti-gravity boots or gravity boots because uh, I'm really sticking to the floor. Okay, we are now on uh, the third deck, and this is the projectile handling room where they would have been able to handle and store about 950 or 1,000 uh, six-inch projectiles that each weighed about 110 pounds. Uh, at first glance, I didn't know if you could really hold that much, but I'm seeing these eyelets and things here along the bulkhead uh, that and diagrams show and especially that diagram that I showed during the video so if you reference back to that there actually shows three rows of all of the projectiles now I am seeing as of right now and the way she looks now I'm seeing two rows but, but there probably was a third along uh, the bulkhead here but we're getting the second right here, and then there's the third down there. All right, so to put it a different way, I see two shelving units. I don't see three. So if you have more information on that, uh, if these, uh, you know, these angle irons and eyelets were part of, say, the third shelving unit, uh, I'd love to know that. Okay, so what we are seeing, I come up that hatch here, right there, all right, right in the center is the assembly, and I see the center projectile hoist right here, we go around the corner, oh wait, this is a circle, there is no corners. Turn around. We've got how they label it the left hand projectile ho hoist here. And there is the right hand projectile hoist. So the powder is coming through. Where can you see it? The powder comes through like the center because that's coming up from the second platform. Aha, here you go. So you will see that these, these curved uh, hoists, and they're beginning to lead, and they're curved because they're beginning to lead to the back of the gun. So they're beginning to head, I don't know if you can tell the perspective here, but they're curving off uh, back, aft, to, to, the, to uh, be loaded at the back of the gun. So those in the center here are curving off uh, away from us now, away from the camera, because they are making their ascent to aft of the gun itself, while the hoists are still pretty straight. Now, this is a compartment that rotated, hence all the hydraulic fluid. All right, like all the handling rooms, I've covered the 5 inch 38s a little bit on the Sullivans. And so there is a hatch right there, and that led uh, to, it was like a repair hatch, and that led to underneath the decking here in case it uh, stopped rotating. All right, so again, if you have a comment, uh, I see one shelving unit, I see another, but I do not see a third, but it had to be attached 
with all of these angle irons and eyelets here. I wish uh, there would have been some semblance of what it would have looked like when it was in service. All right, well, there's a pretty tight hatch here to lead up. Uh, I'm going to attempt to get up there, and uh, you're going to come with me. And that will lead to the second deck. See you in a minute. Well, everyone, I'm thrilled that you're with me here on this journey. Being by myself, this is a little uh, scary, and I probably should have someone with me, but uh, I am now on the second deck of USS uh, Little Rock, which is, we've seen the second platform. Those are the uh, powder magazines and powder handling areas. Then we went up to the first platform where the drill ammo is. Then we've gone up to the third deck, which is where we just were with all the projectile uh, casings around the, uh, well, they weren't there, but you know, the projectiles would be stored there. And now we're on the second deck, the electric deck. And I would have had no idea, uh, and I'll show you in a minute, this is where the motor was uh, to run the fluid to rotate uh, or to train and elevate the turret right above us, uh, above the pan deck. So I will show you that. And also on the diagrams, if you take a look at that, it shows, uh, it shows hand cranks. Well, I would have had no idea. I'm so used to seeing hand cranks that are uh, circular. These are the old school hand cranks, and I'll get you down here hopefully. Alright, so yeah, these are the old school hand cranks. Sorry, everybody, not a lot of space. There we go. So, in case of electrical uh, failure, you could still manually feed hydraulic fluid up to the turret itself. So again in the center we've got the hoists. Uh, the, the powder hoists are again curving back more towards the aft of the gun. I almost can't get the camera through here everybody and myself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sticking. Oh. But there's another hand crank over here, right, which maybe I can or cannot show you if I can turn myself around. All right, right here. Again, the motor that would send the fluid up to the turret itself. Oh boy, okay. So, we've got one more deck to go, which is called the pan deck. So I'm going to head up this way, and again, see you in a minute, folks. Now I'm standing, well, I'm actually still standing on the ladder leading from the second deck up into the gun pan uh, room. And it's actually kind of like a deck in between the main deck and the second deck. So it does open up once you get into the turret. but. Uh, don't you worry, I'm going to start panning around, but this is probably the best place to stand for here. Uh, one of those marvels of engineering, uh, we'll show you the elevating screw and the elevating uh, motor, which are right here. There's the motor, and, oh no, come on, and look at that, there's the screw. So that would elevate the barrels 
All right, they were interconnected. They could not run independently. So that one screw was able to turn all of them. Uh, here's a little ladder, again, like a half ladder that leads right to the turret itself, which is just up there. Behind me here are the hoists, what's left of the hoists. I wonder if this is original wood. I almost can't rotate people, so again, I'm standing on a ladder. Oh boy. Okay. All right, so this is the actual motor. Around the compartment are the rollers as well. All right, the roller path to actually rotate. I can't locate that in my current position, but all right, it would have been, I believe, down here somewhere towards the bottom of the deck. I'm not seeing anything up top. All right, well, this is where we say our goodbyes. Uh, So I want to thank you for watching, uh, and thank you for your support. Now I gotta get down here. <laughs> I gotta get back down. Uh, so, so this shows you a little bit. Uh, as I said, I will uh, be going into the turret itself, uh, and I'll be talking also about the different kinds of six-inch forty-seven uh, ammunition that they would have had. So, look for that in a future video and um, hope you learned a little bit, all right? So I like to not just show uh, what I'm looking at, but kind of give the backstory of the background. So I gotta get down to the first platform again. It's pretty tight. Um, I wore my jeans, which I shouldn't have done, my nice, a nice pair of jeans, which I should not have done, but okay. Such is the job. Hope you enjoy. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe, ring that bell. Uh, to get future notifications. If you look on the right hand side of your computer screen or if you're on a mobile phone and you look down, you'll see some suggested videos. Uh, please check those out as well. We have a lot of good information uh, that, um, that we've done in previous videos and uh, I'm learning kind of along with you. All right, so I'm sure there'll be a lot of happy accidents in some videos, uh, but obviously please feel free to leave me a comment for anything here. Uh, coming at you from the 6-inch 47 barbette uh, and up, I'd say, four decks or so. Uh, we bid you adieu, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.